Hello and welcome to my Swift tutorial for beginners. In this lesson, you're going to learn all about functions, what they are, and how to use them. Now, functions are a critical part of the Swift programming language, especially if you're going to be building apps with Swift. So let's get started. All right, so I've got a brand new playground here, but before we dive in to write our first function, let's define what they are. At the most basic level, a function lets you take a block of code and give it a function name. And whenever you want to execute that block of code or basically run that code, you call that function name. So that might seem really simple, but the powerful aspect of it is that it lets you organize your code into smaller chunks of code for specific tasks. So that way, if you wanted to perform a specific task, you could run that specific function. Now they can get pretty powerful with the ability to give the function data, to have the code take that data, work with it, and return the result back to you. But in this lesson, we are just going to take a look at the basic function. So let's take a look at how to define a function first. So it all starts with the func keyword, or F-U-N-C, followed by a space and then your function name. So you can give your function any sort of name you'd like, but you should be descriptive about what that code inside the function does so that when you want to perform that task, you know which function to call. Following the function name, you have a pair of parentheses. Now, in the basic function, we're not going to have anything in between these parentheses. But in the next lesson, we're going to learn how to add input parameters. And in between those parentheses is where you would specify those parameters. For now, we're just going to leave it as two parentheses with nothing in between them. All right, and then next up, we have a pair of curly braces. Now, in between the curly braces is where you would define your code for that function. Now, any code you write in between those curly braces, that's going to get executed when you call the function by its name. Now, let's go back to the playground and write a basic function. So I'm gonna start on the next line here, and I'm gonna use the keyword F-U-N-C space followed by my function name. Now for this one, I'm going to call it add two numbers because that's what we're gonna do inside that function. And I'm gonna put two parentheses like that. And next up, I would put two curly brackets. This is where I would specify the code that I wanna run whenever I call add two numbers. So why don't we define some constants here? Let A equals one, let B equals two, uh, and I'll say let C equals A plus B. So C equals three. And lastly, I'm going to print C. Now I'm gonna run my code right here. And let's, come on, playground. All right, so now it's run, but as you can see, there is no console output. And the reason why is because this code inside this function doesn't get executed until you call the function by its name. So the way you call it is you simply write the function name, and sometimes you can even use autocomplete like that, followed by the parentheses. And if we did define some sort of input parameter here that the function would require, when you call that function, you would also have to uh, specify that input data. In this lesson for this basic function, we don't have to do that. All right, so let's run this line of code. And as you can see in the console, it outputs three as expected. Now let's try another one. So I am going to just get rid of that line there. So we're not calling the function and I'll call this subtract two numbers. I'll say let D equals five, let E equals one and let f equals d minus e. All right, and here I'm going to print f. And again, nothing is going to happen until I actually call the function, right? So let's run the project now. And as you can see, there is four. Now, this might not be immediately obvious to you, but using functions is actually a huge time savings because oftentimes when you write your code for your app, there are instances where you're gonna have to repeat a chunk of code in different places. Having duplicate code in your project is generally a bad practice and something that you want to avoid. And so whenever you see yourself having to repeat code, 
writing the same thing that you've written before in another place, then think about putting that chunk of code into a function so that you can call it from multiple places. Now there's one more tricky thing about functions that I want to mention to you, and that is the concept of variable scope. The idea is that any variables and constants that you define inside of your function, they only exist and can be used within the curly brackets of that function. So for example, here in the add two numbers function, we have declared a, b, and c. Well, outside of my function, that would be right here. I can't, let's say print a, right? That's gonna trigger an error. Use of unresolved identifier, and that's just another way of saying that it can't find what a is, it doesn't know. Uh, the same thing for B or C. And the reason for this is because we've declared A, B, and C inside that uh, scope of that function. So that's where it exists. And likewise, inside the subtract two numbers uh, function, we have D, E, and F. I won't be able to access A, B, or C here either. If I try and print A, it still doesn't know what A is. So we're gonna get a crash. If for some reason you needed your variables to be able to be accessed outside of the functions, then you would have to declare these guys outside of the function. Now that's just something to keep in mind as you're starting to work with functions. For a lot of beginners, um, they run into issues where they're frustrated with not being able to access these variables and constants that they've declared inside their function and now you know why. So just to recap, you learned about what functions are and how important they are because they allow us to organize our code into executable blocks, which we can then call upon to perform specific tasks. You've learned how to define a simple function. You've learned how to call that function so that you can execute the code inside of it. And furthermore, you learned about the variable scope inside of a function. And just to remind you about that, if you declare variables or constants inside the curly brackets of your function, they are only going to be available inside that function. Now in the next lesson, we're going to build upon what you've learned here and make functions even more powerful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Now click on over to the next lesson and I'll talk to you over there.